Hi friends, welcome back to another video on practical penmanship. Today we're going to be talking about what sort of writing instrument should you choose? Advantages, disadvantages to each one, and some writing samples. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so like I said, today we're going to be talking about what kind of pen or pencil should you practice and write in. We're going to go through a few different instruments and we're going to talk about advantages and disadvantages to each one. So the first one we're going to start with is a pencil. Now, right off the bat, one of the disadvantages to a pencil and compared to a pen is that you have to sharpen it. And the life of a pencil is potentially short because of this, right? Eventually you will have to sharpen it all down and you will no longer have a pencil. Now, one of the advantages to having a pencil is that you can easily erase the graphite if needed. So that's one of the advantages of the pencil. And this line template here is the new Creative Brain Training line template that I've made. It has slant lines for your forward cursive as well as your mirror image cursive. You can get one of these at my website for free. And if you do get one, make sure to leave me some feedback on how you like it because I'm still working out a final version for the workbook that's to come out. So just a, a quick little writing sample with a pencil. Pencils are a favorite amongst my students because they can erase if they make a mistake. Now we're seeing some of the disadvantages of the writing with a pencil. There's a very line width between here and here. See, I changed the rotation of my pencil and all of a sudden I got a new line width. I think it was right there. New line width somewhere in there. Now, like I said, my students love using pencils because they can erase their mistakes, and I consider this to be a disadvantage of the pencil. It is far too tempting and far too easy to erase the mistakes you've made when you're writing with a pencil, and I much prefer to highlight mistakes and show them off so that you don't repeat them. So that's the pencil. Pencil is very nice. It glides very easily across the paper. It's cheap, another advantage to the pencil, but it is not my preferred writing utensil and I often do not write using a pencil. So that's the pencil. The next, we're going to go in order of, of commonality. The next one is the ballpoint pen. I have a couple different ballpoint pens here. And I also have this very beautiful Mont Blanc ballpoint. Very beautiful pen. Uh, it's my father's and he allowed me to use it for this video. And this is a little fancier, even fancier than the Mont Blanc here. There you go, look at that. Custom. This is a ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen has its advantages and also disadvantages. Right off the bat, you can see this lighter line right there. You can expect a lot of variation in ballpoint pens.
It's a little line skip. Ballpoint pens were my primary tool for a long time. <clears throat> now, one of the advantages to ballpoint pens, very cheap. You can spend very little money and write for a very long time using ballpoint pens. If you're somebody who is just entering the ballpoint scene, you will find, oh sorry, if you're, if you're somebody who is just entering the handwriting scene, a ballpoint pen is an excellent place to start. And I, I literally wrote for about two years using almost exclusively ballpoint pens. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I can write with very little pressure. It comes out just fine. I hear a lot of people complain about ballpoint pens, but personally, I don't think it's a big issue. Here we have the Mont Blanc pen. So let's go ahead and see what this writing sample is like. I have not written with this pen before. And it seems like it is the same as any other ballpoint pen. So I'm not a fan of ballpoint pens, but there's a convenience to them. There's a, an accessibility to them that makes them advantageous. And also, you don't have to worry about the quality of your paper too much for a ballpoint pen to work. So that's the ballpoint. Let's do a quick sample with the left hand and ballpoint pen. So left hand mirror writing. I have to write much slower when I write with the left hand in mirror image. You can see how this slant line get, offers some guidance in your mirrored writing. So if you're interested in mirror writing and you want a handout with slant lines that accommodate that, I recommend this one. Now from the ballpoint pen, I jumped up into gel pens. Gel pens are quite nice, a little bit more consistent than a ballpoint pen. This is a very fine point gel pen. So I wrote almost exclusively for about two years with ballpoint pens. Then I upgraded to gel pens and I wrote with a gel pen for about four years. Four years? Excuse me, three years exclusively with a gel pen. And I have different points. This is a 0.38. This gel pen here is a 0.7. So different uh, point millimeter, I guess. I'm going to say point millimeter. Alrighty. So you can see there's a 0.7, this is a 0.38 at the top here. I also have this pen here. This is a zebra pen. I have a feeling that it's a 0.5, but it looks like it might be scratched off the pen now. Let's see. Is, this pen is dying. This pen is trash. Trash. So those are the gel pens. Now the final, the final stop, well not the final stop, you can go one beyond this if you so wish, but for practical handwriting and practical penmanship, the final stop is the fountain pen. This one here is a Pilot Varsity. This is a disposable fountain pen. So if you're interested and you would like to just wet your feet when it comes to fountain pens, this is a great place to start. I'd also recommend a Pilot Metropolitan, which is a very cheap fountain pen and it's refillable and you can use that one for the duration of its lifetime which could be a very long time. Now one of the great things about fountain pens is that they are reusable, you can refill them with ink. This one in particular is disposable so it's not designed to be refilled with ink but I have a few more here that we can show you. But one of the things I love most about fountain pens 
is that you get a little bit of line variation and it'll stylize your handwriting and it also requires very little pressure to write and you get very nice ink flow on particular pens every pen is a little bit different but the pens that I choose to write with regularly offer perfect ink flow require very little pressure and have very nice line quality so this is the Pilot Varsity it's one of the cheaper fountain pens now I didn't fill up a mid-range fountain pen for this video but uh, one of the first pens that I got was this Lamy 2000 and I started off with the Pilot Metropolitan which is my very first pen I can actually pull that out give me one second so I got the Pilot Metropolitan here I didn't fill it up but you can see what it looks like it's a rather sleek pen they have a bunch of different colors so if you're interested in starting in your journey within the fountain pen world this is a great place to start it's not too great of an investment and it also comes with this handy bladder which allows for easy refilling so you can refill this pen you literally just dip it in a jar of ink you squeeze the pouch here and it will fill up with ink as you release it will suck the ink up through the breathing hole here in the nib so that's how these work and it makes them very reusable you can make this pen last a very long time if you so wish but right after I got this pen and I think a couple more I decided that I wanted something a little higher quality so on the higher end of the fountain pen world we have the Lamy 2000 very clean understated design part of the reason why I love it it's not too flashy and it's a real workhorse this pen gets the job done I have never had any problems with this pen once the cap is off, you can see how beautiful this pen really is. Looks like I'm running a little bit low in ink on this pen. It also has an ink window here, so if you shine it through the light, you can see the ink level quite well. Another advantage to this pen. And it is refillable. It has its own proprietary filling system. There's a seam right here. You can't even see it. It's right here where my nail is. And you can twist off the back end here. Dip it in a jar of ink. Um, as you untwist the piston goes down and as you twist it close the piston pulls up so as you're twisting it close and the nib is submerged in the ink the piston will suck the ink up in through the nib and into the body of the pen very beautiful pen very nice to write with One of my favorite pens, it is one of the first pens that I got, like I said, I think it was the third pen that I had bought. I have over 20 pens now, so the fountain pen world is very dangerous. I would not recommend falling that deeply into it. I really should have stopped when I found this pen here because I spent a lot of money that I didn't need to spend. And this pen is by far the pen that I'm using the most. So this is a definitely a next level pen, but if you want to take your writing experience to a higher, more luxurious level, the Lamy 2000, don't look any further. This pen is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend it to anybody. Now, if you're just starting on your handwriting journey, I wouldn't recommend diving straight into something like the Lamy. If you're very much interested in fountain pens, Sometimes the fountain pen itself can be a motivator for people. They want to use their fountain pen. They will write more often because of it. Pilot Metropolitan is an excellent place to start. Another pen that you could potentially use. Just a second. Another pen that you can use as a beginner pen. This is not it. This is a version of it. This is the Lamy LX. So it's got this fancy sheen and color on it. But the, the Lamy Safari and Vista series are very beautiful, very practical pens. They will last you a long time. They have their own proprietary filling system with a cartridge converter. 
This one I've recently outfitted with a stub nib. So the great thing about the Lamy's is that you can change the nib out to fit whatever sort of need you might have. Let's see if I could do something cool here with this new nib. So I've just recently got into the stub nibs and finding out what that is all about. But anyways, this is the great thing about the Lamy fountain pens. You can change out that nib and you make an old pen a new pen. So if you're somebody who has been involved in fountain pens for a while, you know about the Lamy 2000, I'm sure. Now, this pen right here retails for about $120. I'm not trying to sell you anything in this video, but I just want to give you a perspective. This pen writes incredibly smooth. It is in an incredible machine for handwriting. I will probably use this pen to the day I die, as long as I take care of it. And I can never foresee this pen failing me. It's been so reliable thus far. I write with it literally every day. It's been filled up since day one, and it's continuing to prove itself reliable. Now I have another pen here. This is the Delta Dolce Vita Masterpiece. Delta is no longer making pens, so this pen I think retails close to, the ones that are left at least, close to $300. Now in comparison with the Lamy, it's three times the price of the Lamy. Three times the price. And you know what? The Lamy is still nicer to write with than this pen. Now one thing that you don't get with the Lamy that you get with the Delta is this beautiful design. It also has its own proprietary filling system on the inside. It's got this blind cap. It doesn't have a spring-loaded clip. The Lamy has a spring-loaded clip. So you really don't need to spend the extra money. This right here is more of a novelty piece. You have it because of the beauty. Very beautiful pen. The detail on this is absolutely phenomenal. There you go. Now, the next step up from the uh, Delta pen would be this Visconti Homo Sapien. And this is a medium pen, so we can talk a little bit about the width of your fountain pen if you ever do decide to get a fountain pen. The Homo Sapien Medium by Visconti. So a medium pen does not suit my handwriting so well. You have to be careful with these pens sometimes because the paper quality is going to show, especially when you have an ink as saturated as the ink that I have in here. So personally, I wouldn't spend more than what you would pay for a Lamy 2000 on a pen. If you're looking for a reliable pen, if you're looking for something that is going to really enhance your writing experience and always work when it's supposed to. The Lamy 2000 is the pen to go to. It has a ton of capacity on the inside. You can store a bunch of ink and it really is a beautiful understated quality pen. So that's all I have for you guys on pens. I made this video probably longer than it needs to be. But this is just a little bit of some insight on what kind of pens you can use, where you should start off. You should definitely start off by using what you have. Don't go out and invest money in pens until you know that this is going to become a passion of yours. I wouldn't recommend investing this kind of money in pens unless you're going to use them to their fullest extent. Now, I handwrite daily. I use all of my pens on a regular basis. Well, not all of them because I have too many to use and I can't have them all filled up at the same time. But I, I have a pen for the desk. 
I have a, a pen for signing checks and I have a pen to take with me on the go wherever I go. And that's pretty much all I need. So start with what you have, practice often. Nothing is more rewarding than seeing one of these ballpoint pens die because you've been handwriting so much. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do. It's as fulfilling as a notebook that has been filled to the brim. So I highly recommend using what you have and draining it dry. Write as much as you can every single day of the week. Make it a habit. It's great for the health of your brain. And I'm going to go ahead and sign this video out because it's way too long. Take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Alright everyone, thanks for staying tuned till the end. I hope you have found this video helpful and now you're feeling encouraged to go out and find the right pen for you so that you can embrace handwriting to its fullest extent and just enjoy it. Just have fun with it, okay? There's no right or wrong answer. You pick the pen that works for you. I just wanted to share with you a little bit of the variety that there is out there. Now, if you're interested in the line template that I featured in this video and I used for all of the handwriting samples, you can find one down at my website. I'll make sure to leave the link below in the description and the handout's completely free and you also get a sample of the cursive alphabet. So you guys can see that for your own reference and it's just another resource for you guys. So hopefully you can improve your handwriting through that. Uh, if you have any questions about this topic, please leave them in the comments section below. I absolutely love answering questions, and I'm interested in knowing what pen do you prefer? Pencil? Fountain pen? Ballpoint? Gel pen? There's no wrong answer. I'm curious to know. So you can go ahead and leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to toss a thumbs up on this video, especially if you stay till the end, because I'm sorry, I made a really long video. I shouldn't have made it this long, but pens, I got carried away. I love pens. I'm sorry. So if you are interested in the Creative Brain Training Program, don't forget to check out the links in the description below because I have a ton of free resources on my website and I highly recommend you check them out. Thanks for staying tuned guys and we'll see you next week.